Uh, but now joining us to break it all down, what it means for the Trump agenda going forward is former White House communications director, Skybridge Capital founder, and the author of the new book, The Blue Collar President, Anthony Scaramucci, is here. Anthony, great to see you. Hey, good morning, Maria. It's great to be here. Your, your takeaway, do you have a mic on? I, I, I don't know. Okay. Well, I want to ask you something about California, because Nancy Pelosi, I know, Dagan, won by a huge amount uh, in her own district. Yeah. But you made the point earlier that uh, she may have won, but just a few, uh, well, a few minutes away from Nancy <laughs> Pelosi. No. But, but, Anthony, you had Devin Nunes, who won by more than 10 percentage points. You have yeah. Jeff Denham. You had Valadeo. All thought yeah. to maybe go down. And the Democrats really tried. They poured more than $10 million in against Devin Nunes, and he won by more than 10 percentage points. It, it, you know, it's an amazing Trump story. That's sort of the weird thing. So uh, Larry Tribe, my former constitutional law professor this morning, tweeted out, uh, you know, that it was a Trump victory, okay? And he does not like Donald Trump, to say the <laughs> least, okay? And so if you just look at every characteristic and every quality of what happened, uh, it's truly amazing that he didn't lose more seats in the House, and it's truly amazing that the Senate went the way it did. And so you have to, you have to give the president credit. Big I mean, the guy, the guy barnstormed hard, he, 20, he worked hard. 26 events in 11 days. Uh, the guy has the energy of 10 people. I was watching President Obama, who's probably 15 years younger than President Trump, get hoarse after eight events. And so it's just an amazing situation. Whether you like the president or dislike the president, he is what the NFL calls a change maker in the game. Uh, and he did that over this week. You talk about him being a blue collar president, and one of his uh, key sentiments is that we don't want to lose jobs, especially to China. And now we have the G20 summit coming up, and he's going to be trying to talk to President Xi about trade, especially with in concern. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of tariffs happening. What do you see the president doing? Uh, going forward with China and his agenda now that the now that the midterms are behind it. So I'll, I'll make a very bold prediction. Okay, I think he gets a trade deal done very quickly. And if you look at the Trump Twitter feed, he capitalized trade deal this morning. He tra capitalized big victory and trade deal. Okay, he's signaling to people that he's close on a trade deal with China. Even with the uh, technology uh, transfer worries think, and the IP think, worries? They have to first she, admit I, what they've been doing. I mean, they have to. I they won't even that, admit I, that I, they've I, been stealing but from us. I think us. she is. I think, I, I think it's a lot closer than people think. I want to ask really? you about this story that just from the other day, we've talked about this in the last couple of days. There was a Bloomberg report uh, about three days ago that said that uh, the president is talking to China and China will buy oil from the United States instead of buying oil from Iran as part of a new trade deal. And the president's going to talk to President Xi about that at the G20. That would be huge. How big would that be if China buys oil from the United States? I, I really, I agree with Anthony. I think we are much closer to actually striking a deal with China. And the fact that the president grew his numbers in the United States Senate, that bodes well for the president. It signals to the rest of the world, because said the Senate is needed in order to confirm any of these two type of deals, that the president has strength at home. He Supreme wasn't Court. just an anomaly. One thing, uh, one thing on the health care issue, because that was the number one issue for voters, and we've known this for weeks and weeks and months and months, and Democrats were winning and did win on that, particularly in the House. But I'll point out that President Trump said when he was running for president that he would be open to having the government negotiate drug prices on behalf of Medicare. And that is something that the Democrats want. I, I feel like that the Republicans didn't message well on health care. They didn't listen to uh, Kellyanne Conway when President Trump was running two years ago. That was She knew that that would be the one financial issue for women in this country mm -hmm. with those rising premiums. And it seems like that the Republicans who are running for these House seats just weren't paying attention to the president's playbook from two years they ago. They have messaging problems. Well, is that a Paul Ryan issue? I mean, I'll go yes, to the... Yes, it is. I'll go to the... Yeah, we all... Know, I, 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 yeah. Paul here, Ryan I mean, was pretty absent in this, this last... Yeah, so, I mean, he, he, and for a while, he was a never-Trumper. Well, yeah. I mean, for a while, or is he still is? I yeah, mean, I he like, still I is, like, I like Paul. I have a lot of respect for him, but I think he basically abdicated after the Access Hollywood tape. You know, and, that, and, 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 and since then, he's been flatlined as it relates so, to the president. So what happens with Nancy Pelosi? Does she become the speaker? You're not sure about it. You have more than 50 Democrats who have vowed they will not vote for Nancy Pelosi to become the speaker. You can't get the 218 votes on the floor. So do they all go back on their word saying, oh, she's only going to be there for six months or a year? 
or do they actually stand by their word and you have a whole new set of oh, I, 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 got her, I got her as a speaker. Wait, one congressman who is not voting for Nancy Pelosi is Congressman Tim Ryan. I spoke with him on Sunday about running for the Speaker of the House position and potentially unseating Nancy Pelosi. Watch. After the 2016 election, you, you wanted to unseat Nancy Pelosi to become Speaker of the House. Are you running for Speaker of the House this time? Uh, we, we got a couple more days. There are a number of candidates uh, that are having conversations that are talking about uh, running. I will say it's, it's not going to be a coronation. Somebody is going to run uh, for leadership. I think it's important that we have this discussion uh, and have this conversation. I think the American people want to change. I think a lot of Democrats want to change. Right. And so we're going to have that discussion starting, uh, starting on Wednesday. And let's hope we're having a conversation about Speaker of the House and not uh, leader of the minority. Minority Party in Congress, but there's a, a lot of uh, conversations happening right now. People from across the country, different candidates, right. different demographics who are talking about running for that leadership. So who are the choices and, and where does that leave us? I, I really think that there's a Joe Kennedy that could pop yeah. up out of this. I think Lujan has a, has a good uh, shot at a leadership type of position. I think Hakeem Jeffries out of New York will also be able to make a case that he should be there. And Tim Ryan is there before anybody. He's a moderate, but she said she wants to be transitional anyway, Anthony. I, look, I have an 11-day Ph.D. in Washington chicanery, okay? And I'm just <laughs> letting you know, she is going to be the Speaker of the House, okay? She's got the knife out right now. At least for a year. Yep, and she's chopping up. It's like a Benny Hanna situation going on right now. They're chopping <laughs> each other up right now. The woman card too. She's going to Again, be the you're anti-woman anti if you she, don't vote. She's going to be the speaker, speaker of yeah. the house. Okay, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> so, so that'll be so that'll be the new thing, anti-woman. If you don't vote for Nancy Pelosi, then well, she's an incredible fundraiser. She, right? Yeah, she, would, it's the power of the person, and I think that's that's the situation. I mean, she does control uh, the narrative, and she has has you know raised a lot of money for the party. Oh, she's going to be the Speaker of the House. Okay, you know, you, and you know I'm a Vegas person, so I'm ready to bet that whole thing. <laughs> you want to make a bet on, on, on anything that gets done with this new Congress in the next two years? Well, that's a different bet. But, I mean, she's definitely going to be the Speaker of the House. But here's the weird thing about the president. Okay, the president could come across the aisle, and he could cut a deal on immigration or possibly infrastructure because he has less ideological anchors than most people that are, have been, become president. And so... Anything can happen with the president. So, uh, and, that, and that would be great if he does that, I think. Anthony, it's great to have you on hey, the show today. Uh, Thank you so much. Anthony Scaramucci.